While we're all at least vaguely aware that air pollution isn't great for our health, most of us are less aware of how much air pollution we're actually exposed to and what that really means in terms of increasing our health risks. Many assume that the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, keeps tabs on these things to ensure that we're all in a reasonably healthy environment. A recent analysis suggests that those assumptions are incorrect. That's the topic of this week's Healthcare Triage. The analysis, conducted by ProPublica, used EPA data collected between 2014 and 2018 to determine levels of toxic air pollution, mapping out more than 1,000 hot spots across the United States. These hot spots contain chemical plants and manufacturing facilities that emit cancer-causing pollutants into the air. The most common of these was found to be ethylene oxide, a colorless gas that, upon long-term exposure, is associated with cancer, reproductive issues, DNA damage, and neurotoxicity. According to the analysis, over 250,000 Americans are being exposed to such pollutants at amounts that exceed the highest level deemed acceptable by the EPA. And over 40,000 Americans are being exposed to at least triple that. What is the highest level deemed acceptable? One in 10,000 basically meaning that chronic exposure to air pollutants shouldn't increase cancer cases by more than one per every 10,000 people. Many argue that this limit is way too high and is arbitrary to begin with. The analysis touches on the EPA's efforts to regulate these toxins, but asserts that they underestimate exposure in neighborhoods that border multiple polluting facilities. The authors examine the risks associated with each facility on its own, rather than the aggregate risk of living in a neighborhood where residents are exposed to pollutants from more than one facility. In addition, it appears that the air surrounding these facilities is rarely monitored by the EPA, which instead relies on emission reports from the facilities themselves, which the ProPublica report claims are generally flawed. In any case, these data aren't made available to the public in a way that helps them understand what they're being exposed to and how that matters for their health. The analysis is accompanied by a detailed map of the hotspots identified. A good portion of them are located in the South, where regulations are quite a bit more relaxed. The analysis highlights a neighborhood in Freeport, Texas, where the excess cancer risk is 1 in 8,000, and another in Memphis, Tennessee, where the excess risk is 1 in 6,500 people. The analysis also demonstrates the social inequities of pollution, with a disproportionately large number of black residents living inside these hotspots. They point out historical policies that shape these disparities, like redlining and real estate transactions. And importantly, they point out that the EPA has had this data. It's where ProPublica got it, which begs the question, why is this the first time it's being presented to the public in this way? The director of the EPA's Office of Environmental Justice did speak to ProPublica, saying they were focused on addressing the issue, acknowledging the kind of work that will be required to do it. Addressing an issue of this magnitude will not be a quick fix, meaning exposure will continue for many neighborhoods. When looking at the map, keep in mind that it's not meant to assess individual risk. If you live in or near one of these areas and you have concerns, we'll include a link in the description to a ProPublica article with answers to some frequently asked questions, as well as a place to share your experiences as they continue investigating the issue. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode on uninsured and underinsured children in the United States. We'd like it if you'd subscribe to the channel and like the video below. Maybe go on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help support the show even during a global pandemic. We'd like to especially thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Edward Lillaholm, and Brian Nam, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.